Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. This is a different kind of video today, isn't it? In this video, I have got a small piece that I'm working on called Pennsylvania Summer. And it is, of course, based on a Magdalena Briner E.B. Uh, lollipop tree, simple, small composition that I am doing here on Rug Warp using a, a worsted weight, that's the fine punch needle, as opposed to the larger regular punch needle. This is the fine, and I'm using worsted weight wool. And I'm punching this, not quite as quickly as it looks in the video, but I'm punching the background here. I'm punching the whole thing over the course of this video with very few interruptions in one sitting. And it takes about, uh, this particular piece took about an hour, just over an hour, and I know that because I watched a full episode of Diagnosis Murder. And, uh, and then I was pretty much done. In this video, you're gonna see me punching this thing and um, reloading my needle every now and then, doing the outlining, trying not to do packing, right? Just as if I'm rug hooking, trying to be thoughtful about space and leaving little channels of room so it's not overstuffed and dense um, and kind of um, warping, right? Try not to pack. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be stitching the edges up, right? I'm going to be finishing the edges and actually mounting it on a little uh, painted, chalk painted cutting board. This whole product is available from Ribbon Candy Hooking, the store. And again, this is called Pennsylvania Summer. I'm coming up to the part in the video where I kind of peek at it underneath the back of the frame because, of course, punch needle is worked in reverse. So... On the back of the frame, I'm going to peek at it right here, see how it's going. It's going really well. So, looking good. I am going to carry on, Macduff. It's a little. Tulip trees are blooming, and there's not another human in view. But us two, it's a lazy afternoon, and the farmer leaves his reaping in the Cows are sleeping and the speckled trout stop leaping upstream as we dream a fat pink cloud hangs over the hill unfolding sit real still you can hear the grass as it grows it's a lazy afternoon and my rocking chair will fit you and my cake was never richer and I've made a tasty pitcher of tea. Come spend this lazy afternoon with me. It's a lazy afternoon And 
And I know a place that's quiet Except for daisies running riot And there's no one passing by it to see Come spend this lazy afternoon with me Moment of truth time. So I've been punching this for about half an hour. Very fast going with punching, right? Punching is so fast. So much fun. So fast. I've done a few peeks like this to see what's going on under there, but can't get a lot of information that way. I'm ready to flip it over because all I have left are the fruits on the tree and the bird's eye and then fixing whatever I need to fix, right? I have my tails up here and I like to pull those through, but I, you know, I can punch this part if I want to. This is such a petite piece. I'm always afraid with small areas that I'm going to punch through with my punch in small areas, a stitch that I've already done, punch it out on the other side. That's fixable, but you know, I got enough problems. So I like to switch to my hook at this point and just to fill in these areas, these little fine filigree areas. So let's see, let's see what we've got. I'm sure there will be, I'm sure there will be some problems. There always are, but if there's not a million, um, you know, I'll be happy. So I am a packer when I punch, just like I am a packer when I hook. Um, and I can see some packing problems already, but let's see how big the problems are. Now, I'm just making this real tight on my frame again. Yeah, I can see I did some serious packing particularly up here in this star. So I'm going to want to fix that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these sort of errant tails that came through to the front. They are not, they are not welcome here. I can see other bits and pieces that I might want to hit, but right now I'm just doing a quick kind of overview. Now, this is like, <coughs> sorry, a Magdalena Briner EB style piece. It's supposed to, the point is that it has this sort of rough look. I've introduced little, very small lamb's tongues of color for variation. It's not meant to be literal, right? This is not a super graphic piece. This is a very mellow shaded piece that is meant to look like an antique. So I'm pretty happy with this so far. I can see I packed really a ton up here in the um, star. So I'm going to want to fool with that. I'll fool with that a little bit later. I'm going to be looking for the tail and cutting a little bit because I'm feeling like, you know what I might do? Let me bring you a little bit closer to the star. Um, yeah, it's really packed. It's really packed. I'm pulling some of it out from behind and it's not even really doing much because pulling, I'm pulling multiple stitches out from behind with my hand. There we go. That's the area that was really bothering me. I'm going to come, I'm going to come in with my hook and I'm going to get the point of that star. This is the thing for me. This is the beauty of punching, punching something small is tricky. Normally stuff this size, I would mini punch, but I thought be brave, do something different, do something a little bit out of my comfort zone. That's a little bit fiddly. I tend to avoid more than difficult things. I tend to avoid fiddly things because I know what I'm like. In fact, this hook is being fiddly and rug warped, so I'm going to switch that. Isn't it funny how sometimes the $80 hooks are not that great? They're great for, that one's great for like burlap and um, linen and loose, loose backings, but rug warp is the tightest. And um, I go to my Claire Murray hook for this and the Joan Moshimer. They're pretty, pretty identical. I'm just reworking. This is the beauty of having a hook and a punch. You can do the fast part for me with the punch. And then when I want to come in and do the really small parts, I can do it with the hook. It's not that I wouldn't do all of it or that I wouldn't attempt to do all of it with the punch. This is a particularly small part. This is little, our little chopping board project. So, um, you know, this has ex an extra layer of difficulty because of its uh, diminutive size. It's tiny. It's really tiny. So I'm happier with that. I got another tail here. Um, I can see these other parts of the star that are not, this one's really lumpy over here. 
So I'm going to fool with that. I'm going to fool with everything. One of the other things I'm going to do on this side is my hand underneath can feel the tails. You know how I cut the tails on the other side? I can feel tails. So since that's the case, I'd rather pull tails up and clip them on the top. Right? Cause otherwise I don't, I don't have to, this isn't a necessary stage, but it drives me crazy when there are tails on the other side. Um, they're not doing anything bad down there. It's just for me, it's one of these sort of, um, Zen things to flip over and be pulling through all the little tails. Some of them are so short, um, you can barely clip them, but that's something that's going to take some time. So I'll probably do that off camera. And again, this is an optional thing, whether or not you're the kind of person who gets satisfaction out of pulling through all the little tails and clipping them in the front. And I want to be careful because, you know, I don't want to pull through the loops I already have. That one didn't even make a tail because it was so short. But when, when I'm, my hand is in the back like this, I can feel all of these little tails, right? And it, it makes me want to pull them all through, but there's hundreds. Well, there's probably a hundred. Um, so I can do, I can do that when I feel like it later. Let's focus on, let's focus on apples. Um, and, and I'll probably rework this too, because that doesn't make me completely happy. Stars are always a tough shape in any, uh, in any form, in any size. So I'll probably fool with that until I'm happy with that. Another one of the bonuses, I'm much happier with that though, I have to say. One of the bonuses about, you know, being able to hook and punch is when you flip stuff over, like the bird is looking a little bit wonky. See, I've got some stitches that came up in the wrong place. Like this purple one is wound around there. So I can try to fix that manually with my finger, or I can take it out and repunch it or rehook that one stitch. I got one in too close. That's what you, that's what you do. There we go. That's what you do when you're a packer. You tend to get too close. And when you do, you can punch through, um, a previous stitch, a previous loop, but it's nothing that you can't fix like with your hands. So, and you saw how fast, you know, the punching happened. So that part was good. Just thinking, I didn't even think about what color I might want to use for that. eye. um, you know, it's worth saying when I punch anything, this, the smaller stuff for me is harder, big, vast stuff. You know, you have tons of, tons of room to spread out, figure stuff out, but little tiny stuff. It's like one of those less is more situations. And I find everything a little bit trickier, uh, every little bit finer. Right. So, um, yeah, so I'll spend some time with this project as I do with most projects, looking at where everything turned up and whether the height is okay with stuff or whether some stuff got too low. I felt a few times the thread catching on my arm or catching on the, on the, um, pins, right on the comb, the metal comb. And when that happens, the loop doesn't come up so great. I'm finding a small holiday here, right? It's like my dental pick is at work in overtime, but you know, I've, I'm finding little stuff like that. Packers, packers always know, right? You just see a little bit of a, um, low area, right? Like terrain. And it's like, uh Oh, uh Oh, could I fit one more stitch, two more stitches in there? I can do that easily with a hook too, right? So that's easy. So the next thing I'm going to do is just now that I'm flipped over, I can't see my apples anymore, right? That's, that's putting it mildly, but I can come in here with my hook and I can feel where, where the apples should be. So I hook same way as I always hook with pulling the tail up. And I'm going to try to hook in a little circle and be mindful and careful about all the loops around it. And it'll probably some of these apples, cause they won't always be exactly the same size, right? It's not a, it's not a sampler. Um, they could be, but mine probably won't be. This one looks like it's going to be about five loops and then I'll pull up a tail. So, and like I say, they might all be different. Um, not all, but they're going to be not all five loops. And then I'll trim and move to the next apple or whatever it is, berry. I always think these are family trees, not fruit trees, but they become known as lollipop trees, candy trees or uh, whatever. But it's going to be a nice pretty tree with some nice bright color. I'm not going to want to use my bright orange, um, that hot, hot red. It's not really, it's more like, um, it's more like a red than an orange, such a hot, hot, um, I don't know what you'd call that pers maybe persimmon something like that really beyond tomato red 
and you know I'm not going to want that same exact color in every one of my apples um, or fruities whatever they are so I'm going to look at some of the other colors I have that I've been using and some of my other colors I've got sitting around um, for variation I could do them all one color I mean it might look nice and uniform it might be um, might be pretty. It's probably that I will end up doing most in this color because it's such a good strong color, isn't it? Against the heathery purples and browns and oatmeals, like it's such a good strong color. It really catches your eye and um, it's like that principle of hooking right in art in general, dark light, dull bright, right? This is definitely the bright I'm doing some some uh, hygienist work in here with my thing, trying to find a place that I can go in that's not occupied. Really like the way that looks. These are not my colors, the yellows and the red, but man, with these drab colors, does that ever look pretty? So I'll probably finish some of this off camera so the video doesn't get too, too long. You saw me do the punch-ins, and now I'm tidying up and um, and adding my fruits with the hook keeping it easy, right? This part is very fast too. Once I get going, it's going to be a game of, you know, what colors do I want? And uh, that's always a fun game. So I'll probably finish this and then I'm going to come back to you and show you how I actually mount this on the little chopping board. So here we are. Looks like it's done, doesn't it? Looks like it's done. Looks like it's ready to go on this little guy. Oh, sneak preview. Sneak preview. It's not quite done. So looks like it's going to go on here. It looks like I made it a little bit too fat, didn't I? I made it a little bit too fat. But you know what? I'm not going to change it. See, I always have to overdo it. I always have to overdo it. So I have my other one outside, my other little chopping board, right? My little decorative chopping board. I have it outside and I spray painted it this very pretty chalky, uh, light, 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 icy pink color that isn't super pink. It reads more as like a shabby, chic kind of a white. So I have my other one drying out there and I want to talk about this guy here. So he is a little bit big, shame on me. Um, just so you know, you know, sometimes people ask the question when we're punching, hooking, whatever, uh, do I, do I punch or hook inside the lines, outside the lines or on the lines? In this case, I kind of punched a combination. The, the answer, the correct answer, is uh, doesn't matter. Choose one, but stick to it. In this case, I did mostly on the line, but I did a little bit of outside the line. It's just me. It's me with my packing. So I was a little bit fluffier and fuller than I should have been. Am I going to pull out a row? All the, no. Oh, my God, no. So um, I'm really happy with this piece. Summer in Pennsylvania. This is like, you know, inspired by Magdalena Bryan or Edie. I'm finished with the punching. That that took about an hour, so that was really fast. Tops an hour and a half with all of the fooling around, adding the, the fruities right in here, and then you saw me pressing. So the question is now, am I happy with this bulkiness, right? If I'm going to use it on the chopping board, which you can, you can, you can always save your chopping board for something else if you want to do a mini punch or something. Maybe you want to do something else with this. But at this moment, your piece will come with an even bigger border than this, right? I always put a little bit of a bigger border on because I don't know what kind of frame you have at home. Now, the thing with this, did you see the way it was folded under? I like to do, I call these the envelope uh, corners, right? We tuck it in like on the diagonal, like a little envelope or like you're doing one of those things at school, right, where it says, like, will, will the boy like me thing. So it's that kind of a folded concoction we got going here. But you can see, look at how bulky that is, right? That is so bulky. And, and no matter how I stitch it, that looks like one of those, those paper game things, doesn't it? Like I got a piece of origami happening now. So I'm not going to want this attached to this, that full and puffy. That's just too much. Right? And rug warp is very thick, too. So that's just too much. So I want to trim it down. Because if I have a lot of extra material around the edges, you know, it's going to want to parachute up all the time, isn't it? Like like this. Like, like it's going to want to keep buckling. And it's, it's whether, whether you choose to glue it or nail it or what, I'm probably going to nail mine with tiny, tiny nails with larger heads, right? And get in between there and boom, boom, boom. We'll do that later. But for this moment, I am realizing that I don't like how um, I don't like how wide my margins are. 
So I'm going to make smaller margins and you know I'm my piece and your piece too is stitched around the edges with the thread um, so that it doesn't unravel while you're fooling with it and working it. And now it's time to um, stop that and stop that and come over here to, I want to try to pull some out because I want to make smaller margins. I don't want to be so small that it's like sands through the hourglass. You know, these are the days of our lives as it falls apart in my hands and atomizes. I don't want to do that. I want to just do a smaller border. So that's what we're doing here. Now I've got the sides trimmed down. There isn't an exact measurement, but mine are about an inch. I feel comfortable with that. You know, if it starts unraveling, like sands through the hourglass, I, I'll be I'll be upset, but I'll I'll move fast. I'm gonna do it right now. It's not like I'm leaving it kicking around for six months, you know. So um, so in this case, when the when the edges are like this, and I put my corners up like this, right? I have much less to worry about. It's remember before it was just it, it was it was like um, layers upon layers, uh, stars upon stars. So I'm gonna pull it up. I don't want to pull it so far that the edges start curling, right? That I'm not going to do myself any favors if I create a different problem. And you know I pressed it really nice, right? So that's all done. So I'm literally just folding the edges up like this. And then I can come into the back. This is a regular regular needle and thread. Uh, what, if, what, if I only have, um, what if I only have quilting thread? That's okay. What if I only have upholstery thread? Really thick thread? That's okay. Whatever you've got, if it goes through the needle and you're able to do this, we're just tacking it down, right? This is this is like a utilitarian stage. This is not a pretty stage. I'm just tacking it down. I'm kind of catching my stitches to this part is never going to be seen again, right? Take take a good look. This is the last uh, moments of seeing uh, the back of this like this. And you can you know you can pin it down if you want. Some people are more or less used to sewing. I'm very used to sewing, so I, I do a lot of shortcuts, and I don't like to spend a lot of time back here because this is all invisible, right? So no one's going to see this again. Maybe I should make it into a time capsule and put a note in here, um, you know, for like God knows when, but I won't. It's not that kind of an epic piece, is it? It's a tiny little piece, and it's just for fun. So I just do a little stitch as I go. I'm not measured. I'm not being careful. I can feel it catching as I stitch. Uh, but I know it's not showing on the front. I'd have to go really, really deep in there for it to be showing on the front. And I'm going to come to my corners. I'm going to be a little bit more thoughtful at the corners, right? This is just, it's just tacking. If you do it further up and you want to close in this raw edge, you can do that if you want. If that makes you feel more secure, right? Being secure is great. Uh, do whatever, whatever it takes to make it seem right in your mind. But you are literally at this point just going to go around the edge and I like to take stuff like this off as I go. I know it's a raggedy old edge. Uh, I know some people are very technical, and those people might want to sew it one more time, right, just so it doesn't unravel. You do whatever you have to do for it to seem right to you, right? Um, and if it's like, oh, how can she stand having those edges, like raw edges like that? I hardly ever sleep at night, but this isn't one of the things that's going to keep me up, I'll tell you that. So I'm just catching it here. You can see at the corners, I like to make the corners a little bit extra, um, so it's catching on some of the loops there, you little stinker. Um, I, I make sure that the corners are extra strong here, so I just kind of make some stitches in here. Common sense, right? There's no formula here. How many stitches should I put in the corners? Oh God, don't be thinking like that. You're going to drive yourself nuts, right? You just make it on the back so that they can't see the backing part, the white part on the front. That's all you're doing. Hide the white part, right? Make it pretty. Make it pretty on the front, right? This is the abomination that nobody will see, but there is not a formula to it. You just put as many stitches in. The back can look like Frankenstein, right? And as long as the front looks pretty, that's what you're doing is you're glorifying the front by making the back disappear. You're tucking it back there, right? It's like a face, facelift for uh, summer in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania summer, let's call it that. I'm going to speed up while I go around the edge here doing my stitches. Hey, are you thinking to yourself, 
what if I don't want to put this particular piece on my little um, cutting board? What if I want to do something else on my cutting board? I have a vision. I have a vision for the cutting board. I'm going to do something with mini punch or I'm going to do some little uh, antique quilt patch or something. And I want to I want to use this for something else. Well, if that's the case, um, you should make sure if you're planning to hang it or whatever, just make sure that this part is secure, right? Because see this one side already, it's already coming undone just a little bit. It's just the one. It's the one strand. But, you know, if enough strands um, go because it gets a lot, it gets touched a lot and it gets a lot of use. And then you get down, you know, to the your hooking line, your punching line where you were working. That's going to be a problem, isn't it? So if you anticipate this piece going, for example, um, on a wall, tiny little piece on a wall, or, um, you know, as a mug rug or whatever, and, it, and you think, oh, it might get handled a lot, you want to finish the seams a little bit better. And of course, I have videos on that, too. I have, I have lots of videos on different kinds of finishes that you can do to make it very secure, depending on what look you're going for. Some are easier, some are harder, um, just different looks, you know. But if you're going to be hiding the edge either in a framed frame, right, if you're going to maybe put this into a picture frame and, uh, and it's kind of floating in the middle or a little shadow box, uh, or you're going to put it onto this cutting board, then this is enough, right? This is going to be enough. But if you have other ideas, think about what would be appropriate, right? Because you don't want it to unravel over time. You don't want to look at it one day oh, and go, oh, my God, it's right there at the border, right? It's like the shore's coming in and you didn't move your picnic, your picnic basket or blanket or whatever, Right? That wouldn't be good. So you want to be thinking forward to stuff like that because you have infinite choices. So make sure you make good ones, good common sense choices. Keep it easy. Keep it simple. Right? Don't give yourself nightmare projects. But make good choices depending on use. That is the only thing that matters. So my plan is to nail. And I just went to check my piece and you can see wet paint. Um, I'm being careful, but yeah, the piece is not ready to hammer onto yet. But I'm just projecting forward because if you're like us, you, you've got all this junk, all this, you know, hardware jaws, all junky, and you've got lots of different choices of nails, and you're wondering which one, if you're going to nail it, right? Because you're going to want to, once it's on the board, you're going to want to nail it into the board um, if, you, if you do that rather than glue. Gluing is also possible if you want, you know, just be careful. Be careful if you glue it, right, to use a glue that's appropriate for, for fabric and wood, wood like an all-purpose, and to keep a lot of weight on it, right, for, for a good long time. Because, again, you don't want it to parachute up in the center, right, bubble up like that. Make sure it's nice and flat. That glue will work great, too. It might be that I end up with glue if I struggle with the wood, um, with the, I'm sorry, with the nails. But it is a nice thick piece of wood, so there shouldn't be a huge problem with getting it on there. It just becomes a question of, you know, I've got lots of these guys, but they're obviously much too big. And, yeah, I mean, they would not only show, but they're much too big. So that's a that's a hard no. And there's going to be like the three little bears and Goldilocks, right? I've got these little guys, which are beautiful. They have a little pin top, right, a little flathead top. These could be good because ideally what I'm going to want is to place them in here and through and then be pounding away at it. Those might actually be too small. They would hide really well, but they might be too small. I'm going to have to try those, but they might be a hair too small because you see how something that small, you could hide it in there. You can't even see it anymore. That would be that would be a thing. So that's a maybe. That's a hard maybe. Yeah, gosh, my, pan, my hand's all wet now. That was paint. And what have we got in here? Okay, we got some rusty little guys that might work. These are cute too, right? This is a good size too. So just see what you've got before you run out to the store. You probably have something that's just right. You only need a few. Um, I'll show you. Oh, these are some. These are some different ones too. Some of them have smaller heads. I'm just not sure that the small heads um, are going to work as well. But when it dries, I guess I'm going to find out. You know, I want ones with a nice sharp tip like that and a flat head. That's pretty ideal. If you can see that, that's pretty ideal in my mind. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, thing to think about, if, particularly if you've done something like this before, you might be thinking, oh, I've, I've attached, um, like I've attached my mini punch to a, to a cutting board before. This isn't a thing. Um, it can be a thing because if you think about it, the mini punch is probably on your weaver's cloth, which is a much thinner backing fabric. This is the, and, and then it would be some kind of floss, right? It was super thin, but this is, this is rug wool. Like this is rug wool yarn. 
And this is on rug warp. And it's not insanely thick, but it's thick. It's thicker than weaver's cloth. So all in all, we got a much thicker piece. And you want to be thinking about how to present that because it is going to be apples and oranges when you think about how to present this versus how to present your mini punch projects on similar cutting boards, right? Okay, well, it is getting to be evening and it is almost dry. Poor little bug, I think, met his end right there. Let's get rid of that. Poor guy. Poor guy. Sorry, bug. So I can see it's not exactly wet, but it's not, like, deadly. I always have to push push my luck. Um, so yours will be spray-painted with, I think, one more coat, this kind of pink color. It's hard to tell because it is getting a little dark out, uh, and I am working on pink. So I separated some of these little nails, and I plan to put him right here. And I'm just going to make some strategic choices about where the best little hidden spots spots are the hidden spots are the best right let's find the best hidden spots here and i'll probably put in I don't know, six or eight let's see how it goes all right and you know i'm going for ones that are a little bit on the longer side but don't have huge heads on them because i want them to i, I want them to hide so i'm going to start in the middle Let's see, I'm doing checking the dog for ticks. You know, I do that with so many of my projects. There's a good spot. Let's see if we can get him in there. And if this is loud, I'll turn it down. Right in. Boom, there he goes. Can't see at all. Fool with it with my finger. And there we go. Done, 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 done. All right, now I'm going to choose this one. Some of mine, because everything we have is kind of crappy in our lives, um, we have a lot of old nails that look rusty and dangerous. So this is the perfect time to handle them, right? I'm going to stick him. You know, I can find some open spots um, where I don't have a, a loop. And, yeah, that's perfect, isn't it? Down, 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 rock lobster. There he goes. Yeah, those are great. We're already well secured it's just a question of how many how many do i want i tend to work on stuff like this the way that i work um, on my pieces like i overdo it and i'm going to try to not do that because why you know why do that i'm going to put one in the corner corner here and i'll probably go off camera uh, with noise while i hammer the last guys in <laughs> So I'm kind of, uh, first of all, I'm kind of glued onto the back. So I want to be careful about that. All right. I might have to do a little bit of retouching because I, I jumped the gun. That's not going to happen to you because uh, you get it in the mail and it's all done. Yeah, I'm just kind of fooling with my fingers to see. Yeah, I'm pretty nailed on on all sides. I think that's, I think that's kind of it. It's bad light tonight, but you'll see it in the uh, video thing. I mean, it's on there definitely permanently for goodsies and the good thing about this method on like glue is if I change my mind and I want to put it somewhere else I can I can root around for those nails right and I can f use my fingers to find the nails and when I do I could pry them out right and I could I could um, rethink it and do something else with it so this isn't as permanent as um, you know doing it with um, glue because with glue if you put glue on the back and it's really on there and you change your mind, you know, normally if something gets stained or splashed psh, with red wine or whatever, and you know, you want to um, pull some of your yarn or your strips out and rehook it a little in the hopes that when you rehook it, chances are it won't land exactly the same way. And some of the stained part or uh, sort of uh, sun bleached part will 
will fall into different places, right? And then that's a good thing because you can kind of reposition stuff by fooling with it. But when there's glue on the back, you really can't do that because if there's a glob of glue on the back and you want to kind of reposition a little piece, you pull it through and it's going to either snag and it won't come through because there's a glob of glue on the back that's old and hard, right? Um, or it does come through and then in the front you've got the glob of glue that you cannot separate from the yarn. So that's the main reason I'm not a fan of glue. It's not because people associate it with tufting or other crafts or it doesn't seem traditional enough. No, it's more that I'm, I, I changed my mind, you know, from minute to minute. We just decided in the last 30 seconds that we would change from Chinese food to pizza for tonight. So I like to change my mind. I like to have that kind of flexibility. I don't like to feel uh, claustrophobic in my decisions. And if you feel that way too, maybe it's a better thing to do stuff with these little nails. They're just little nails, right? They're just little guys. They're about, let's see how, let's see how big they are. Um, I mean, you don't have to get the same ones as me at all. Um, they're half an inch. No, they're not even half an inch yet. Yeah, no, they're half an inch, just over a hair. No, they're half an inch. So anyway, happy, happy making your, um, Pennsylvania summer piece, right? Beautiful yarn piece already on its hanger, ready to go. How can I hang it? How can I finish it? Well, we just did. We just did. It was as easy as that. So have fun with it. This is available at Ribbon Candy Hooking. Love this project. Lots of fun. Good to finish something from beginning to end together. This will be available soon, and I will see you soon next time at Ribbon Candy Hooking. Take care.